In today's video, the manufacturing process of urea has been explained with flow sheet diagram. If you are a student of chemical engineering, then this topic is important for you. In this video we will discuss all these points. Let's start. First of all we will know what is urea. Urea is a chemical compound with the molecular formula CONH22. It is a nitrogen-containing organic compound that is produced naturally in the bodies of humans and other mammals as a byproduct of protein metabolism. Urea is also synthesized industrially for various purposes, including as a nitrogen fertilizer, a component in certain skincare products, and in the production of plastics and resins. It is a colorless, odorless solid that is highly soluble in water and is commonly used in laboratory experiments and medical tests to measure kidney function. Urea has a molecular weight of 60.05 grams per mole, a melting point of 132.7 degrees Celsius, and a boiling point range of 135 to 145 degrees Celsius, at which it decomposes. Furthermore, urea dissolves well in water. It is used in solid fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, animal feed, formaldehyde resins, melamine and adhesives, and nitrogen fertilizer, among other applications. If we talk about the methods of production, then urea is made in the industry by ammonium carbamate decomposition method, and in this method the following reactions takes place, and this reactions is exothermic and endothermic in nature or overall it is exothermic. And to make urea, mainly carbon dioxide and ammonia are required. Now we will learn about all the equipment used in urea production, and then step by step we'll also understand its working process. These are called compressors, which are used to compress the gas. In this process, 3 to 5 moles of ammonia and 1 mole of carbon dioxide are compressed by the compressors, and the pressure during this process remains between 100 and 200 atmospheres. And it is called urea synthesis autoclave. The temperature inside it is 185 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 180 atmospheres. Cooling water is supplied to maintain the temperature inside it. Inside it ammonia gas and carbon dioxide gas react with each other. And there is also decomposition of ammonium carbonate and then urea is formed. And these are evaporators. Evaporators are devices or equipment used in the process of evaporation. Let me tell you for information. The concentration of the solute present in the solution is increased by the evaporator by removing the solvent. In this process, urea is the solute, while unreacted ammonium carbonate, ammonia, carbon dioxide, and water are the solvents. These are both flash drum evaporators, and this is a vacuum evaporator. The flash evaporator contains a gas liquid separator and condenser. During the process, the temperature inside is maintained at 140 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 27 atmospheres. Furthermore, the temperature inside is maintained at approximately 140 degrees Celsius, with a pressure of 1 atmosphere. Lastly, the temperature inside is 135 degrees Celsius, while the pressure is 60 centimeters Hg. This is called a proling tower, in which urea is converted into a granulated state. And these are called pressure valves and heat exchangers equipment, through the pressure valve, the pressure of the gases flowing in the pipeline and the pressure inside the evaporator are maintained or controlled, and the utilization and temperature of the heat exchanger are controlled or maintained. And it's a kind of pump that transports the recycling solution and gas into the autoclave. First of all, carbon dioxide and ammonia are compressed by the compressor and sent to the urea synthesis autoclave. Here, carbon dioxide and ammonia react with each other, forming ammonium carbonate. Subsequently, the process of decomposition occurs, wherein ammonium carbonate breaks down, resulting in the formation of urea. Now, the solution obtained from the autoclave contains approximately 33% urea, while the remainder consists of unreacted ammonium carbonate, ammonia, carbon dioxide, and water. Now, to increase the concentration of urea, the solution is sent to evaporators. When the solution reaches the first evaporator, the unreacted ammonium carbonate, ammonia, carbon dioxide, and water vapor present in the solution change into a gaseous state and separate from the solution. They then reach the condenser where they condense into a high-pressure solution, which is sent for recycling. 
the concentration of urea slightly increases in the solution obtained from this evaporator, which is then sent to another evaporator. Evaporation process also takes place in this evaporator, and the off gases present in the solution are separated from the solution, which is called low pressure gas. Now, it can either be recycled or used as a byproduct. Now, the concentration of urea in the solution obtained from this evaporator is higher than before, that is, 80% aqueous urea is obtained from here, which can be used as a liquid fertilizer, for granular urea. This aqueous urea is sent to a vacuum evaporator. The process of evaporation is achieved by reducing the pressure. The solution obtained from this process contains 99% molten urea and less than 1% water, which is sent to the purling tower. Let me inform you that molten urea contains water so that it can flow in the pipeline. Molten urea is sprayed from the top section of the tower. As the molten urea descends, surface tension causes it to form round droplets. Simultaneously, cooling air is circulated inside the tower from the bottom section. When the molten urea comes into contact with the cooling air, the water present in the urea is removed, and the temperature decreases. As a result, the round droplets solidify into granular urea, and finally the granular urea exits the tower which contains less than 1% burette. Burette is not a component of urea itself, but rather a substance that can be formed as a byproduct during the synthesis of urea.